The U.S. military shot down an unmanned aerial vehicle over the Red Sea Saturday. It was launched from the Houthi-controlled areas of Yemen, which have been the starting point for dozens of missile and drone attacks over the last few months. The U.S. and more than 20 other nations created an international task force called Operation Prosperity Guardian to combat some of these attacks. Joining us now to talk about it all is Admiral James Fogo. He's a retired United States Navy Admiral, currently Dean at the Center for uh, Maritime Strategy, a nonprofit, uh, nonpartisan think tank in Washington, D.C. Uh, Admiral, thank you very much for walking us through this. You're at the board there in Washington, D.C., and I want to start with, which is where these attacks are taking place. We know they're having an impact. We heard Anthony Blinken say 15 percent of global trade moves through that area. So take it from here. Well, Tony and Elaine, uh, thank you very much for having me on today. And the uh, region which Mr. Blinken was just talking about, and we're going to talk about now, is the Red Sea. And you can see here uh, the water in blue with the number of stars on there where attacks from the Houthis on uh, Western shipping has taken place. Uh, this canal, if you will, is about 1,400 nautical miles long. It's about 221 miles wide at uh, one of its widest points. But on either side is a choke point, the Bab el Mandeb Straits. So everything comes down to a narrow passage. And then at the other end, the Suez Canal. The Suez Canal is extremely important to global commerce. As Mr. Blinken said, 15 percent of our commerce goes through here. Uh, by comparison, if you look back a year, there was a ship named the Ever Given that grounded in the Suez Canal for about six days. Uh, $10 billion worth of commerce goes through on bulk carriers, uh, fuel carriers, or container ships every day. So for those six days, that was a cost to the consumer of about $416 million <laughs> per hour. Jeez. Additionally, if you can't go through the Red Sea, you have to go around the Cape of Good Hope to get to Northern Europe or into the Mediterranean. That's an additional 3,500 nautical mile transit. Takes you about 10 days to do it. Burns more gas, but also increases the carbon footprint, which is not good for climate change. So this is all negative value added by the Houthis, and it's going to affect us in our pocketbooks just when we thought we had inflation under control. So it needs to stop pretty soon. So, Admiral, given those incredibly high economic stakes, how have the United States and other countries responded? Well, Elaine, uh, there have been about 61 uh, missile and drone attacks in uh, uh, that have been shot down uh, since about the 19th of October. USS Kearney uh, was the first to engage on the 19th after the uh, Hamas attack on Israel on the 7th. And there were some Houthi missiles that were fired towards Israel, air-breathing cruise missiles. Uh, Kearney knocked them down, presumably with her standard missile, too. And then a bunch of drones came out. There were 15 drones that were also knocked down. And this has continued every day since. And it's been going on for uh, three months now. You can see that uh, this region is peppered with what looks like warships, and they are warships. We've got uh, Kearney, Hudner, uh, Gravely, uh, Laboon uh, out there, along with members of Prosperity Guardians, something that Secretary Austin put together, about 20 uh, allies who are contributing. The French and the British have been involved in some of these shootdowns. Unfortunately, about a week ago, uh, the Houthis fired on a U.S. Navy helicopter that came from one of those destroyers, and our defensive rules of engagement are uh, we fire back. Uh, Ten Houthis were killed, and those three boats were destroyed as they tried to take down one of the commercial ships that was in there. So um, about 1,500 uh, commercial ships have transited safely, but uh, big uh, lines like Maersk have said, we're temporarily suspending, and we're going to go around in a different direction around the Cape of Good Hope. So this has a tremendous uh, economic impact. The United States Navy is keeping the uh, pipeline open, and that's what we're supposed to do, preserve the sea lines of communication around the world, not just for our interests, but for those of our allies. Uh, so, Admiral, let's uh, zoom in for a moment on, on those uh, warships you mentioned. Um, they are bristling with weapons of all manner. Uh, what kinds of weapons are being deployed to knock out the Houthi threat? Yeah, these are magnificent ships, Tony. So what you see pictured here is an Arleigh Burke-class destroyer. Uh, Admiral Arleigh Burke, I actually met him when I was at the Naval Academy back in 1981. Uh, he was a great warrior in World War II. When he commissioned the USS Arleigh Burke, he said, these ships are made to fight. You better know how. Well, guess what? Those American sailors, chiefs, and officers are out there doing just what Admiral Burke charged them to do. Last Friday, I was talking to the chief of naval operations, newly confirmed Admiral Lisa Franchetti. We served together in Europe for a couple of years, and I asked her about uh, the performance of the United States Navy, and she said she was really proud 
of those sailors, chiefs, and officers, many of whom have been at sea since before Christmas, and not only the, the folks on board the ships, but the families ashore who are taking care of business while their loved ones are in harm's way. Let's talk about the destroyer. It's 500 feet long, 9,000 tons. It has a complement of surface-to-air missiles, Tomahawk land attack missiles, should we have to go uh, after uh, launch sites on the ground, and anti-ship missiles in case we are attacked from the sea. Additionally, there's a deck gun on this ship, a 5-inch 54 caliber gun. Now, if you look to my left, you will see what is a ceremonial. This is actually a 5-inch 54 shell that's been fired. Now it's used for ceremonial purposes. But there's a lot of gunpowder in this tube, and the projectile up top could be a dummy round, it could be an airburst round, which is perfect to use against the drones, or a high explosive round for naval gunfire ashore. You would not want to be on the receiving end of one of these projectiles, and that in and of itself should deter the Houthis. Now, we've been knocking down these drones and these missiles for a couple of months now, and as you heard Secretary Blinken, uh, he is... Uh, you know, doing amazing things to try to come up with a diplomatic solution. But so far, uh, we have not. The Houthis continue to fire. And sooner or later, we're going to have to face the facts that we might have to go after the archer and not just the arrows mm. that are proceeding into the Red Sea. Wow. And those Tomahawk missiles would come in handy then. Uh, Admiral, we are Absolutely. only a uh, little more than a week into this new year, but I have to say, I think you've got a contender for most informative segment of the year. Um, really not informative. everyone brings the props that you did, uh, and so we learned a lot. Thank you very much, uh, Admiral James Tony Fogo. Tony thank you so much. Yeah, I hope you'll come back. Center for Maritime Strategy, where you were the dean. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.